Okay, we and we are live. It's oh, Jolly good. Good. good morning, everybody. Good day, good afternoon, wherever you are. Good morning, good morning. Can Hope you see us the, up there in the, the finest of fettle? All right. Uh -huh. Martin's... Martin is checking that we are properly live. Yeah, live, live. absolutely. Happy mm. Tuesday, folks. I'm glad we're all back online. Yeah. So we are very excited this morning um, to, to introduce our guest, who is actually a neighbor up the street in Venice. A lot of you Beatle fans definitely will be fans of his already. And he has a new book out. He is a, a photographer, a drummer, musician, an author, and now of late a keynote speaker. And so please welcome with a drum roll. See what I did there? Oh, the fantastic. lovely, the charming, the handsome Mr. Rob Shanahan. Hey, hello, Rob. Hello. Hi, Rob. Hello. Good morning, girls. Finally, we make it. We've been trying to get you for so long. You're such a busy boy. Years yeah. in the making, and here we I are. I know. Right yeah, there. So, I know. But you have you you have a, a fabulous product to to tell oh. everybody all about today. But you know, it's I'm interested in your in your history. Where are you originally born and raised? Yeah, Minnesota, Norwood, Minnesota. Population one thousand fifty eight. The day that I left. Oh. <laughs> Tiny little farm community, uh, oh. 35 miles west of downtown Minneapolis, and most impressively, 18 miles from Paisley Park, home oh. of Prince. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Exciting. What yeah, the, the year I graduated high school yeah. was the year Sheila E.'s record, uh, Glamorous oh. Life, was released. Same oh. month, same year. Uh, it's been amazing getting to know her. And as you know, she wrote the foreword for my second book, Volume I know. 2. Yes. So it's funny how worlds collide, you know? Isn't it just amazing? Yeah. yeah. What What came first for you um, in the artistic sense? Was it music and drumming or photography or did it? was it all just always in you? Drumming first. Ten years old, drums. Really? Uh, and then uh, when I was 13, my mom bought a camera for the family, a Pentax Emmy oh, yeah. that I fell in love with. Looking through that camera changed my world. Everything just turned into cinema. Everything I looked at yeah. well, became yeah. a little movie in my camera, and I loved it. And I just kept doing both, playing drums and photography through high school. And yeah. you've managed to make a fabulous, successful career out of both. both. Yeah, and then moved it to L.A. and really got yeah. to work. Yeah, but, you know, it's the old, the old thing, isn't it? If you do what you love, you'll never actually work, work, work yeah. a day in your life. Exactly. So 100%. true, is it? Yeah, if you it enjoy really it. Is pay yeah. the rent from the hobby. I remember growing up, my um, one of my stepbrothers, Mike McCartney, Mike McGear, um, he had a Rolleye camera and he was always you know looking down and taking he took some fabulous pictures back in the day which um then i think i think paul got a pentax camera and then along he came, gave mike a, yeah for his 21st birthday didn't he it was a, a camera a Rolli, yeah. was it Roll and uh, brian epstein used to call mike flash harry because he, he always, had always had the little flash bulbs, you know oh i love it so you want to hear my mike story yes. oh yeah i met mike mccartney yeah Backstage in Liverpool at the Liverpool Arena in 2008. I was on oh, tour really? Ringo, and it was when Liverpool had the distinction of city of culture. Do you know about that? Oh, yes, yes. absolutely. Yeah. To be there with Ringo for that tour was amazing. And Mike came backstage to say hi to Ringo, and he had a yellow manila envelope full of black and white and old oh. photos. Wow. And he dumped them on the table and started spreading them out. And I'm looking over his and Ringo's shoulder at these photos that I've never seen before. The world yeah. has never seen before. His own personal private collection yep. of yeah. photos of the lads back Great. in the day. Great. And yeah. I was just amazed and blown away by the photos. I and love it. Yeah. Ringo said something like, Oh, Mike, these are so great, so wonderful to see them. And Mike said, well, you can have them. And Ringo said, I'm traveling, and I travel light. You can oh. keep them. Hang on to them. And I'm thinking, I'll take them. Oh, I'll, I'll right. hang on to them for you. Calm down. Over here. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, Mike is a lovely guy. Yeah. He's yeah. wonderful. He's become quite the historian, too. And I think, you know, Ringo was obviously 
a bit of a photographer back in the day when they were on the road too. He took some. Oh yeah. I used yeah. to go through um, Ringo's photos with him and, yeah. and look at him. And we talked about doing a project where I'd go through his photos and start archiving everything. Cause I did that for a few of the, for the Apple records photos. Yeah. Oh wow. Years ago. Um, when Ringo had here, I'm adjusting my volume. Sorry. Uh, I think it was one of the Ringo. You know what it was? It was this this star ceremony on the Hollywood Walk of Fame when Ringo oh, got his yeah. star. They had an event at Capitol Records, yeah. and we did a bunch of large prints, uh, like massive, like 30, 40, 50 inches tall. I don't remember. Really big photographs wow. of a handful of my photos and then some of the Apple archive photos. So I got access into wow. their remote hard drives. It was password oh, protected and I got in and I was snooping around at the images on the hard drive and I grabbed a couple that we wanted to print for the display and, yeah. you know, wow. like old photos that the world has never seen that are just sitting in the archives. Great. Yeah. Anyway, I grabbed a couple and I did some retouching and cleaned up some of the old dust and speckles. And uh, there was talk about me going in and starting to work on all the photos and cleaning them up and archiving because they had been scanned, all the old negatives and slides, uh, but in the raw format. So, well it, may still, it may, well, it may still happen. You never know. These things come back around yeah. and somebody will just spark something like Paul and Ringo are in Paris together this week at Stella's fashion show and you know one of them might just say hey whatever happened to those old photographs of but you know these things have a way of going around so if we put it out there in the universe yes you never know and <laughs> technology has changed so much hasn't it and is every day well this is what i said to rob last night when he yeah. came by with this fabulous book which we'll open and go through shortly i said you know everybody with an iphone now thinks they're a photographer yeah yeah. yeah 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 no people no mm -hmm. no do you try and be your own dentist no <laughs> <laughs> that's funny would yeah. i be my own dentist no and no. there are certain things that i just won't do like will i fix my own car no no uh, just leave it to the trust people and i do get it there is that whole iphone thing going on where oh, you know, your show now everyone's got their iphone up in the air I, what I wonder why do women always take selfies in the bathroom well because they you can see the is bum it? in the mirror <laughs> Well, I have no them. problem with those. Oh, I'm sure you don't. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell Hillary that. No. I hope she's not Behave. Watching. Oh, behave. I hope she's no. not watching. Yeah. But, I mean, these these photographs, I, I'm just, you're not, this isn't going to do it justice, obviously, on video. But it is it is like being going through a museum. It is page it is. after page after page. And the interesting thing to me is, you know, when you when you see these images, boy, all the hard work and the travel and the day and the talent and not only on your behalf, but on these musicians behalf to the capture, universe yeah. to stop for a split second, second. And that was captured. It's almost inconceivable that you as one person have got so many of these. Thank you. It's yeah. It's, it's, I'm really happy with this second collection of photographs. It's yeah. a really a uh, great mix. And I don't know if your followers or your viewers know it's my second book. My first yes. one came out in 2012 forward by Ringo and this one I did as a tribute to Charlie Watts yeah gentleman right there wonderful gentleman yeah wow. yeah and I lovely pictures in here one of the greatest things was getting to know Charlie and working with Charlie and there's Steve Jordan the new Stones touring drummer I love him uh you know just was really great getting to know Charlie and I originally wanted him to write the forward to the book but of course I didn't get it before he passed. So I thought I'd do it as a tribute and to get That's his daughter, Serafina, to write something and yes. Keith Richards to write something for the epilogue is just amazing. Just totally oh, isn't amazing. it a most lovely piece of work? Keith. 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 Yeah. How is, Love him. How is Keith still a thing? <laughs> is the question. Because he's preserved. Keith is amazing. He's one preserved of those. Preserved in alcohol. <laughs> He will be studied, like I mentioned in the book, he'll be studied in classrooms for oh, yes. eternity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no, this is, I just, it's one of these things you just don't ever want to put it down. And now, obviously, there are shots here of both live and studio. 
the famous Derek Smalls with the famous uh, Final Tap Cucumber, one of my favorite movies. <laughs> I love it. And I yeah. love working with Derek Smalls. He's oh, I bet. incredible. It's a lot of fun. And I've been shooting <laughs> stuff with him for 25 years. It's incredible. Yeah. Do you have a preference between studio and live? No, I like it both. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the live because I love music so much and it's really yeah. great capturing live music as it happens. But I also love the studio, being able to create something wonderful, just one-on-one -on -one with an artist. I mean, there's nothing yeah. better. And uh, I just got off a three city keynote tour and that's one of the big questions they asked me, working one-on-one -on -one with artists. And really it's just being a huge fan and being a musician myself, I've been playing drums forever, as I mentioned, since I was 10 years old. So I know the really good questions to ask. I know the really good questions to talk about with their music and their writing. And I'm a very curious soul. I'm still a teenager mm -hmm. at heart. That's nice. Music. That's and I love bringing that excitement and that, that wonder yeah. to my photo shoots. Artists pick up on that. Right, sure. respond and they open up and they drop that curtain, that shit, that you know, whatever that invisible force field is between you and a major artist. Yeah. Right. And once I start working with them, you know, on that basic raw love of music level, yeah. that's where the magic happens. Yeah. And you know, the corporate world, I share that with them, talking about like, you know, the top salesmen. It's you know, we're really just salesmen, we're people people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm a people person and I love working with people and uh, it's all part of the connection. I used to assist many years ago for the great photographer, Norman Seif. Oh, and wow. I met him. He's a yeah. wonderful guy. Uh, he has the best. He's the wonderful. Best. And, um, you know, he was, he was a soccer player in South Africa and then he was a surgeon. He was a doctor and a surgeon and he just couldn't live with the whole apartheid thing. And he fled South Africa, went to Europe, I think Germany and just bought himself a camera and it's all just, you know, intrinsic within him. And one of the things he used to do with artists, we, we did a shoot for Tiny Tim once upon a time. And um, he always used to say to them, well, what, you know, what's your favorite food? And they would start talking about, you know, like sitting around a kitchen table. And that would be my job would be run out, find that food or make that food. And then oh, that, wow. that would be the lunch. And then that would bring down all of the, the curtains because it would in, invariably be something from their childhood, like mm -hmm. comfort food. Oh, that's amazing. And yeah, that's them, really good. Take, yeah, it would take them back into this place where they were like mommy, daddy comfortable. And all of a sudden Norman was there with, and the, the camera just sort of disappeared. They were just having a conversation with him. Yeah, that's actually the way it works. When you can make the camera disappear. Right where it gets to be a comfortable hang and, oh yeah, click, click. Yeah. In between, um, that's really the magic. And Norman, no one better than Norman Seif doing that. And I was fortunate enough, I got to meet him at a show he did last year here in uh, LA, well, actually up in Burbank. Yeah. It was a, a pop-up gallery and my wife and I went and we got to hear his seminar and it was really great. And he talked about shooting the stones uh, yep. Circa Exile on Main Street. I ended up buying one of the prints. It's hanging in my drum room. It's gorgeous. And someone asked him if he ever shot the Beatles. And he said, no one ever shoots the Stones and the Beatles. And I was thinking, wait a minute, I did. Oh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't shoot all four Beatles and I didn't shoot all the original Stones, but eventually I would shoot yeah. members of the Beatles and members of the Stones. Yeah, that's wild. Well, you have that rare distinction. Absolutely, that's, yeah. That is crazy. Mm -hmm. um, what were your chief um, musical in, uh, influences? In, influences, yeah. like when you were growing up in Minnesota, were you, you know, Who was did it you listen to? rock and roll? Was it metal? Was it all over the map? Yeah, I mentioned this um, on my keynote tour. One of the uh, CEOs asked me about that. And, you know, I grew up listening to my parents' record collection. Uh, okay. Barry Manilow. Uh, they had CCR, of course, Beatles and Stones and right. uh, Carpenters, like the Carpenters. I freaking love them. And I found I out that the great drummer Hal Blaine played on most of my parents' uh, records yeah. that I had growing up. 
Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. With Tommy Tedesco on guitar, no doubt. Yeah, Carol. the Wrecking Crew played on so many great records. Um, Herb Alpert. Yeah. You know, we we had the Tijuana Brass record. So I, right. yeah. I was exposed to a lot of really great music growing up. And, of course, when I started playing drums when I was 10, I got my first drum kit. So I was playing Beach Boys and CCR and Carpenters and... Uh, you know, whatever my parents had. And then when I started collecting my own records, I think my first record, in fact, I know my first record, 1978, Kiss, Destroyer. Yeah. Oh, wow. And then I got into Van Halen, 1978, Van Halen won their first record. And when I heard Alex Van Halen on drums, that was it for me. That was my guy. Wow. Yeah. Ashley Davey, our friend in Alabama is asking, um, way earlier than that were you like a gene krupa fan or any of that oh yeah so my high school uh i played in my high school jazz band for six seven years when i was in sixth going on seventh grade i got drafted into the senior high band uh playing on the drum kit and i played all the great classic jazzers like buddy rich gene krupa uh louis belson ed shaughnessy yeah uh, all these great jazz drummers that I would see on the Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. Yeah, sure. Uh, you know, I just would emulate towards them, and I was like a little Buddy Rich, thinking I was Buddy Rich, but nobody's yeah. Buddy Rich. No. What, uh, but it was a, there were really great drummers to emulate and really work on my chops and my rudiments. Yeah. Uh, Elizabeth in New York is asking uh, from the photographer side, you know, you have all these influence, influential drummers and bands in your life. Um, was, the, was there a style of a photographer growing up that you were drawn to? Yeah, Jim Marshall. I love Jim Marshall's work, uh, one of the greats. And sadly, we lost him years ago. And there's a lesson to be learned. I talked to him on the phone once. I reached out and uh, was totally excited to get him on the phone. Yeah. And he invited me up to San Francisco to come hang and spend some time and go through archives and... I figured, uh, you know, next time I'm up at the Bay Area, I would reach out and go see him. I should have just dropped everything, jumped on a plane and gone up there right away. But lesson learned. I didn't. And, you know, he died not long after. And I'm really sad that I missed him. But it was great to have a phone conversation with him. And I have all his books. And I've been a huge fan of his work. And, of course, Norman Seif. Yes. Um, just wonderful. Terry O'Neill, also. One oh, of my yeah. favorites. Yeah, one of one of my uh, early recognitions of a photographer was because I was a David Ca mad David Cassidy fan, and yeah. in 1972 or three, when he was touring England, it was um, Dave Ellingson and Kim Carnes were in his band, and Henry Diltz was on tour with them as a photographer. But he plays a mean harmonica, and so I grew up thinking Henry Diltz was a harmonica player until about ten until years can, later, yeah. I discovered whoops, he's a photographer. <laughs> Yeah, that makes a good photographer, somebody that can play with the band. Oh, yeah, sure. Because yeah. he, of course, he would always have his camera on top of the, you know, the speaker cabinet or something. So some of those incredible Cassidy 70s early shots you see of just millions of girls were, of course, taken from the stage point of view because Henry was also in the band. <laughs> so that's the, yeah. that's the best, being able yeah. to be on stage and capture images. I love that access. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it must be very exciting. But yeah. you, I'm imagining on a live situation, you, you have to work around so many things, don't you? Yeah. Safety, lights, cables, the magic moment. I mean, how, how many images does it take on average to, like at, at an Elton John concert, one of these pictures in your book, how many do you shoot to like get the perfect one? Or you, you just don't count, you just keep shooting? Well, back in the film day, uh, it was different. Now in the digital world, you know, you can shoot like crazy, but I've never been a rapid fire kind of photographer. I'm a moment guy. I like to wait for the moment. And <laughs> <laughs> plus, I don't like editing through a bunch of photos. When I know I have it in the can, then I'll, I'll put the camera down and enjoy the music. So, wow. Oh, really? That's interesting. interesting. Yeah. I like being selective and, you know, being in the right moment and capturing just a little bit, just a few frames of every, you know, of a key moment. And then I know I have it. And is this one of the key takeaways from your keynote? Tell, tell us how, to, I'm curious, how did you all of a sudden um, 
you know, how are you given the opportunity to educate other people as a keynote speaker, having all your experience and, and where, where, where do you go with that now? What are you doing with that? Well, it was really a great pivot. It was something that uh, I didn't see coming. Uh, I was at a dinner party for the great country artist, um, Phil Vassar. Oh, yeah. I've been shooting Phil's records for many, many years and his neighbor happened to be in LA the same time Phil was doing a show here and I got invited to a dinner party the night before his show and met his neighbor, John Delosier. And we hit it off like gangbusters, found out Van Halen was both of our favorite bands growing up. And he wanted to know all the stories. He had been on my website and he had a million questions. And then he ended dinner. He said, look, I'm going to hire you to keynote speak for my company. At oh. the time he was uh, VP of CenturyLink the big oh. telecom giant. Yeah. Right? Yeah, so my first keynote was to a thousand super high powered uh, CenturyLink executives down in San Diego. Not only did I do the keynote that afternoon, but that night my band opened opened for Sammy Hagar. Oh, and Michael that's cool. Yeah, wow, I hired that? my band and Sammy to play the House of Blues and it was such an incredible, wonderful, wonderful festival and uh, great show and great fun and the keynote went really awesome and something sparked I don't know what it was I just uh, realized that I should be doing more of these yeah. and everyone kind of agreed so yeah well that must be very satisfying kind of went on my way and started doing keynote speaking got yeah. an agency and uh, it's been really, really a wonderful thing sharing. You know, I've been shooting for so long, for 35 years, that I have this, you know, nice collection of, of photos and the backstories, you know, all yes. the experiences that goes along with it. Plus my world travels, you know, I love traveling and shooting and, right. uh, you know, my Africa photos do oh, well yeah. in my, my gallery and the travel photos. And of course the rock and roll photos we're selling on my website. Right. So I think, you know, the keynote just kind of fits right into all that. It does, yeah. Well, I wonderful. think, you know, having somebody like you, I've done a little of it myself as the digital diva, more on the technical side and big data and Bitcoin and blockchain and all of that stuff. Yeah. But having, having a keynote speaker from a different world from the audience, I think it just opens up. It's sort of like this team corporate team building stuff they do. It opens up a little place in people's brains who are maybe doing a nine to five job and they're in a repetitive um, lifestyle to see somebody like you just gives them that spark of in inspiration. And it, it could go off in any direction within the corporation. But I think that it's very wise of these big idea. nine yeah. to five companies to have someone like you come in with just the artistic flair of not just music and photography, but all of your stories and travel and Bengal cats and pictures of Africa. It just, you know, if it makes one employee think outside the box and invent something new, then yeah. the company benefits, right? Yeah, I'm not there to convince their company to quit their day job and go, you know, no, no. their dream. Well, my goal is there is to, I share my health and fitness routine. I share my uh, secrets to my long-term marriage success, 28 years in my Good industry. Boy. Good on you. Yeah, we're 30 That's amazing in itself right there. And, you know, 30 years with my band, the Hollywood yeah. Stones. Uh, so I'm a long-term commitment guy. I've been doing my business for 35 years here in LA. Yeah. So it's all about putting your heart and soul and, you know, your 100% best self into yeah. every situation. Right. And how that applies into the corporate world, you know, in the sales and marketing teams and, you know, just finding your best inner self, your best yeah. rock star self and yeah. applying yeah. that to the companies and it's yeah. been working. And the LinkedIn reviews really speak for itself. You know, when I got back off this three week, uh, excuse me, this three city tour and, you know, when I read the reviews and the comments on the LinkedIn pages, yeah. that's just proof that it's, you know, it's, that's it's right. working yeah. and then it's doing something really positive and you know the the thank yous and the ceo comments are just yes, really right. amazing and inspiring i love it is uh, the, i'm sorry no go ahead is there another photograph book in the in the works you know what's funny is i did a grammy museum uh, one-man show uh, oh. to launch the book and i 
commented when the first book came out in 2012. Yeah. We had this really great launch party at the Hollywood uh, House of Blues. Oh. And I kid you not, that night, you know, I'm sitting there signing volume ones and everyone's loving the book. And mm -hmm. I had people ask me, okay, so when's volume two coming out? Yeah. yeah. So crazy. So now I'm asking about volume three. Well, 12 years later, volume two came out and now people are already asking for volume three. And my answer is volume three may be a travel book. It may be Africa. Yeah. And maybe, uh, you know, my world journeys and I'm in, Af uh, excuse me, I'm in Japan next month. Fantastic. So uh, I have a whole new collection of Japan photos that'll be coming out soon. And wonderful. Um, last year I did Croatia and I did um, Iceland, which wow. was an amazing journey. And I spent 10 days driving around the perimeter, uh, wow. just taking photographs and and studying the beautiful country it was amazing and i'll be releasing those photos soon so who knows volume three could be a collection of travel i think that's a great Wonderful idea. idea ashley's asking um do you still like using film along with digital or are you all digital now i'm 100 percent digital okay yeah i switched uh right at the beginning and i still have my film cameras and i still run a roll of film once in a while just for fun but you know i'm just Mm -hmm. So all into digital and I can get the effects I want in yep, yep, yep. Lightroom and Photoshop. Yeah. And I just love archiving everything with my digital files. Everything's now in hard drives and it's just much easier for my workflow. Yeah. And also, I suppose with the metadata, this is a question Elizabeth's bringing up, with the metadata on a digital file, it makes it easier for tracking and copyright. How do you handle, how do you go about copyright protection? Yeah, well, I do them as groups, like for the volume two, everything went to the copyright office as a group, as a volume, same uh -huh. with volume one. And then, you know, every year or so, I do a big dump, a big copyright dump, and make sure everything's protected. But, you know, as creators, everything's protected the moment we take the photograph. So right. uh, we are always protected, but that's a never-ending game. I could have someone full-time scanning the internet trying to find illegal usage of my yeah. photos it's oh, out sure. there it's, yeah. it's everywhere i see it all the time i tend not to look it just gets <laughs> a little depressing, depressing but yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well but then again if you know there's two schools of thought to this uh, uh shannon the artist who painted the um cover to angie's new book um she sees her stuff all out there all the time and she's like you she said it could be whack-a-mole i could really bring some negative energy into myself and my world by just yes. trying to put other people out of business. Or yeah. I could let them be my street team and make me famous so people come to my website and buy my stuff. That's exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> so that's kind, of, that's kind of where she falls down on that. And you, you have you have two websites, right? So you have robshanahan.art, which is your store, shall we say, and then robshanahan.com, which is the whole backstory and the about and, and yes. all of that. Yeah. Yeah. One is for art directors and the other is for e-commerce. You know, right. one is just a, a book online and the other is a place to purchase and uh, mm -hmm. go buy the art. And I would like to introduce everyone to go to robshanahan.art and yep. sign on to my newsletter. I do a monthly, Great. sometimes oh, bi-monthly, sometimes twice a month. I send out emails and give you a little backstories on some of the images and uh, you know, I always make it interesting and fun and exciting and people respond. People love signing up and I'd love for you to join. Diana's asking about, are you a minimalist with your photo equipment? And I guess the other part of that question I would ask is, or do you have bags and bags and bags and bags of lenses and stuff, all that good other digital fun stuff? Yeah, I don't love to travel with a lot of gear. Uh, I travel with what I need. And if I'm in the studio, yeah, I have a lot of stuff, but um, I love the latest and greatest technology in the cameras, but my lighting is old school. I have all the old pro photo, uh, big metal packs that are all battery powered. So I never have to look for an outlet. I can take it anywhere in the middle of a field or in the middle of a stage. Uh, and yeah. it's, it's really well built and travels Travels nicely, uh, so I do have a trusty, uh, a few of those trusty old Pro Photo packs. But my camera gear, I'm in the Nikon Z9s now, the mirrorless, okay. and I love them. And they're 
just beautiful workhorses, you know, big, massive, yeah. high res raw files. They're just great. Wow. So yeah, that was going to be my next question. Are you a, a Nikon guy or a, what's, what's your uh, camera of choice there? And when I travel, I like one camera, one lens, make it work, figure really? it out. Yeah. You have got some cojones, my friend. You just well, stop, stop taking photographs of Elton John when you think you've got the right one. and just. Enjoy I take it. that back. When I go to Africa, that's a whole different story. Then I bring oh. my big, long safari lens and I have like three bodies and, you know, three, four lenses. That's different. Africa is a totally different okay. beast, if you will. Uh, it requires a lot of equipment. But like when I'm shooting rock and roll, if I go out on the road with a band, I just have one case, two cameras, two lenses, and wow. I'm good. Elizabeth, maybe it's going to take us down to too long of a rabbit hole, but why mirrorless? Wasn't by choice. It just so happens that Nikon, you know, through the years, uh -huh. uh, I've been upgrading with the new systems like every three, four years. Uh, and the the new Z9s just happen to be mirrorless. And I would rather not go mirrorless, mm -hmm. but it's the best camera that Nikon has out right now. So I got used to it and yeah, uh, yeah it took a little bit adjusting to it because you're looking through a little screen now. Sure. It's like, yeah. it's, it's like a little digital like screen versus looking into the mirror and the reflection of your subject. Right. So it's a little bit of getting used to, but the files are just so big and beautiful and gorgeous that it's wow, really okay. just a trade-off. And you don't you, you only use Nikon. Ashley's asking no Leica for you. Yeah, I don't have a Leica. I bought one for my wife for Christmas years ago, and we have it. It's in the house. It's a beautiful little Leica travel camera. Right. Uh, but I don't use it on any of my shoots. No. Interesting. Very, very interesting. And so I used to believe uh, before the digital world, I was a Hasselblad guy. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I had a couple of those uh, and, you know, probably five, six, seven lenses. And I really love that. That was really where photography was an art. Yeah. And you really need to know exposure and what you were doing and, you know, the sound of that shutter that I can hear it right now. And I yep. really miss it. It was I felt like I was really capturing a beautiful piece of art in a camera. If you hear it now, you think the next song up is going to be Duran Duran's Girls on Film, right? That's a good one. <laughs> it That's is a good, good one. It is a good song. Yeah. Um, so you were mentioning, uh, as we were getting ready for the show, you are going to travel uh, to New Mexico before you go to Japan. What's Tell the kids about that. Yeah, New Mexico, I leave day after tomorrow. I'm speaking for a group of 16 to 8-year-old kids. It's just a wonderful uh, opportunity. Uh, I love speaking to the young kids just to give them an idea of what is possible in their life. Listen yeah. to themselves, you know, just find a way to turn your love into a career. Like you said earlier, right? you'll never feel like you're working a day the rest of your life. I don't feel like I've ever had to work my whole life. I've never worked for anyone but myself and it's just been a complete joy. And if I can share that to the young kids, and this is a really great group of young, smart, talented kids that had entered a contest, had to write in an essay and got selected to be flown to New Mexico to be part of this group. And they're touring uh, like the Atomic Energy Labs and it's sponsored by NASA and they're doing all sorts of cool things for the week. And I'm on the very last day very I'm kind of like the dessert for them uh, <laughs> because they'll be hit, they'll be bombarded all week with scientists and engineers and yeah um, nuclear physicists and uh very educated and then i come in mr rock and roll and i'm just gonna blow some minds. The, i did a program years ago that martin put together called art and the beatles and it was all about you know the album covers and then the one painting they did together and then you know, Ringo's photography and George's paintings. And then Paul had a painting thing and then John and his doodles and what have you. And we uh, volunteered for the LA County school district and the, um, the after school program and went around and just, and it just feels so good to, in fact, we were in your, at the, the um, elementary school at the end of Abbot Kinney there at the bottom of Maine. And one kid was, it was amazing. It was a, a little Latino boy. 
and he said, you know, we we were getting uh, ready for your talk at, at home, and um, my dad had a question, uh, and was John Lennon murdered or assassinated? Said, he was oh. like eight years old. Wow. And I'm thinking, good grief, what a, you know, what a, a, a really interesting question, first of all, but what a world that we live in that an eight-year-old kid would even know what either one of those things was. Yeah. You know? And so I spent some extra time with him and we went outside and did some drawings and stuff together and, you know, just gave him a hug and stayed in touch with them for quite a long time. And he's now, he's a graphic artist and is designing games and stuff. So, you know, you like, yeah, you like to think you had a little tiny hand in just turning somebody around. Right. Yeah. I love working with young kids. I love mentoring and I love being able to offer advice and, you know, if I could help, one kid in a little bit. That's absolutely makes yeah. it all worth it. Well, that kid, because Mike. When Mike I first moved to LA, I had, you know, the generations in front of me do the same. I had some really remarkable, accomplished photographers and musicians that, uh, you know, pulled me in and helped help guide me and would always be there with great advice. And I think it's important to give back. Oh, absolutely. And there's just no, no better feeling. You just feel so fulfilled and you, you, you think, you know, good grief. If, if one of these people, even watching today, not just doesn't have to be a kid. If somebody goes out and pays it forward and does something positive, you know, the butterfly flaps its universal wings, right? It just makes the world a better place. I sound like an old, I sound like an old hippie because I am. It's just an old fart, actually. I'm just an old fart. Well, oh, look who's talking. 94 and a half. <laughs> amazing you girls just really amazing what you're doing and uh you know, just... lots of filters on on the camera and i was looking at my wrinkles today they're more like stonehenge now <laughs> <laughs> i look in a, a magnifying mirror you shut up upstairs stone and stone and there we go no i look like an old crocodile handbag <laughs> stone on that, on. that yeah. would be if we ever get a picture of Keith Richards and Ange, it would be titled Stone and <laughs> there you go. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Keith, he earned every line and crevice on his. Oh, day. I have indeed. I've worked for no, him. he, he, did. oh, he has. Keith so have I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Sometimes people say to me, Why don't you have some work done? and I say, Hell no. These are the wrinkles of my memories. Yeah, absolutely. I've earned every one of them. We'll just take it to Home Depot and get some spackle. That'll do <laughs> oh, I love it. Well, <laughs> our faces are the roadmaps of our life. Are you girls familiar with the book called The Dash? No. no. All right. So on our gravestones, we're going to go a little deep here. You know that little dash between your birth date yeah. and the yeah. date of death? Yeah. Yeah. That dash, it's how we live our dash is what really defines yes. us. And you want to pack as much as you can into that dash. Right? Yeah. As many experiences, yeah. as many joyous things as you can, whatever makes you happy, Yeah. you should fill that dash. That's good advice. Um, and when I see guys yeah. like Keith Richards, I think, man, that's an incredible dash. Yeah. To be able to live the life. And have that dash. Yeah. Incredible. Wow. There's, there's a wonderful saying, and it's been attributed to George Orwell and oh, all sorts of other people that says, We each finish up with the face we deserve. Ah, <laughs> I'm not it. sure what to think about that. <laughs> well, I, you know, yeah, I don't know either. It's, it is what it is, but yeah. I love the dash concept. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm going to make a, a series of t shirts with just a line on it and, and just ask me. <laughs> Well, this would be a good time to drop in my health and fitness little plug. Oh, yeah. so I realized 25 years ago that I wanted to take out all the negative things of my body. So no drinking, no smoking drugs. Well, I never did any of that anyway. But just, you know, quitting the alcohol was was a really great thing for me. And not because I had a problem. And I don't say everyone should quit alcohol. But we're drinking, <laughs> we're alcohol, drinking free. alcohol free in your honor today. Love it. It just worked for me. And then when I turned 50, which was a while ago, I decided to cut out all red meat. So yep. I've been cleaning up my diet and, and, you know, I've had gym membership since uh, 1990 here in LA. Wow. Uh, and I love my physical fitness routine three, four times a week. I'm in the gym doing a hardcore class. Wow. 
And uh, if I'm on the road, I'm in the I'm in the fitness center, not in the bar. It's the great place to be. Right. And, you know, just trying to keep everything healthy and positive and taking care of my body because this is it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You only get one. You got one chance. So yeah, right. that's amazing. So tell the kids uh, where they can. It's, it has been scrolling across the bottom. So if you need to find Rob, you can hit rewind in a little bit. But uh, tell the kids which is it, what website and uh, how to find you and how to stay in touch and sign up for your fan club email. Yeah, go to robshanahan.art, A-R-T, or jump on my Instagram, at Shanahan Photo. Follow Perfect. along. Perfect. Absolutely. Always fun. Always exciting. Every day we're posting on, on Instagram a couple times a day. Yep. Uh, a photo, a little backstory or a travel photo. So always something new and exciting going on. Good. And make sure you avail yourself of not just volume one, but also volume two. And we can... Uh, swell Rob's email fan club list to uh, millions and millions. So he'll be forced to do that travel book. We all want to see. Love it. Let's <laughs> do the travel book. Yeah. And also Rob, nobody gets out of here without one of my atrocious limericks. Yes. And just, and just my lim artistic limericks. She's actually. also a limerick book author. <laughs> ah, okay. She yeah. has a book called Mrs. McCartney's Liverpool limericks and other random Irish haikus. So, um, Here's, here's one written here this morning, this especially morning in my nightdress yeah. for you. Okay. Actually, in oh, I her, can't wait. In her computer, but yeah, in her nightdress. <laughs> With one, a one, two, two three. Dear Rob, thanks, thanks to you for appearing, showing pictures which are so endearing. Your book we will treasure. It brings us such pleasure. Your readers will loudly be cheering. Yay! Oh Thank my God, Rob, it's been lovely. It's that was the first limerick ever written for me. <laughs> well, and, and, the, and there you go. See, there you go. everybody's that's now that's part of your dash. You can, yeah, I'll uh, I'll email that to you and you can print it out and stick it somewhere. It'll <laughs> oh. be on my wall. Okay, Love it. that sounded Absolutely. rude when she said you can stick it somewhere. No, I rude. meant it. I meant this it is nice. a family show, <laughs> it'll be hanging proudly on my wall. Good. Yay. I hope we see you again soon and your lady wife and your daughter, if she can be bothered with old farts like us. Yes, come for tea. We are neighbors after tea. all. Yeah. yeah, we're very close. And my daughter lives right here by the Fox Hills Mall. We got her into a condo oh, uh, in 2020 and she's doing amazing. And it's just so wonderful Good. having a 24-year-old daughter, almost 25. It's incredible. Wow. Wow. We'll come by and we'll we'll put, yeah. put the kettle on for a pot of Mrs. McCartney's tea and uh, chew yeah. the fat and rock and roll and all of that. And uh, yeah, speaking of rock and roll, we, we wore our little Geist shirts. So it's my husband's my husband's musical project. We can talk all about that when you come for tea. Thanks for having me and uh, wonderful that. conversation. Lovely. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. And appreciate uh, it. And we'll see you all of a sudden. Okay. Okay. God okay bless. Kids. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Thank bye. you for having me on and. Hope to see you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.